So our system, you remember that slide from the beginning about what, what's in a system? Ours is taking all the plumbing that is associated with the normal one and replacing it with a tank of water with a handful of submersible pumps in it and a controller. The basic concept is a tank of water, a handful of submersible pumps. One pump feeds the, the uh, heat sources. Um, Actually, you can have up to three, but it's illustrated here as one. In most cases, there's only one. Uh, they, so one pump pumps the water up to the heat source, returns the warm water into the tank. That warmed water gets pumped out to the floor by each one of those pumps. Each one of those pumps can do one or feed one loop or two loops with an optional splitter. We'll be talking more about the about that option in a little bit. And it plugs in to the wall, the wall voltage is turned into 12 volts DC, same thing as a car battery. It's uh, low voltage and safe. Get your hands in the water working with an electric pump, you gotta wonder about that, right? Uh, so it's, it's safer that way. And we can handle up to four thermostats. You'll note there's not a single valve in the whole system. There are uh, uh, lots of flexibility and uh, just Super simple. I'll show you the plumbing system, plumbing, how to do the plumbing connections in a little bit. First, I want to talk about the internal flow concept of it. The, uh, yeah, the warm water gets uh, here, uh, returned on this side of the tank, along with where it mixes with all the return flow from the floor. The light blue or aqua colored arrows represent water coming back from the floor. So that's the coldest water. That's why we're drawing the water. Uh, for the pump through that, or from the, the coldest water, so it gets the most chance to be heated up. Then the warmed water is mixed automatically with the flow, and it's just nice to be able to understand the, the, the general concept. Uh, instead of that, just that one pump, yeah. So that's just your primary loop right there then? Yeah, that okay. serves as the primary loop. Okay. And uh, in contractor speak, the entire unit is a hydraulic separator. Okay. The, um, let's see, where are we? Yeah, we can have multiple, uh, instead of just that one pump, we can put up to three. There's three little spots in that uh, wall to plug in heat source pumps. And so we can integrate not only your primary, like an electric heater, um, but you could add a propane and do off-peak. You can add a wood boiler. Um, if you are so inclined, you can do a hot water solar panel to help heat your floor. And it's flexible. You can be, that can be added later. The advantages are primarily uh, simple installation. The easy, quick connections um, are a big thing. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, I'm going to hit it right now. The basic idea is we just take our blue hose, push it down over the pecs, and squeeze this little white clamp on it. There's some better pictures of it, but that's the extent of the, the plumbing. There are some places you do want to use it, some places you don't. Radiators, not, a, not we're not the right system for radiators. Because it runs at low pressure, um, it can cause problems, and because oxygen can get into the system, those big old cast iron radiators from grandma's house or uh, some older rentals, <laughs> uh, those can corrode with our with oxygen from our system being pumped into it. We can now, uh, I originally had the X here uh, on the pumping the unit or pumping the water up two stories. Now I'm not concerned about that. So we changed, we slapped a yes label over that. Uh, so the unit will pump water underneath it, up a floor, up, uh, up and down a floor, or up two floors. Uh, now we're going to talk about the heat sources. I mean, it's great to pump water around, but it's nice to make it warm first. So here are some of the options. Uh, first of all, how big do you need? That's a matter of what does your house need? There's a simple rule of thumb a lot of HVAC guys use. It's 22 to 25 BTUs per square foot. 
and for new construction that's pretty adequate. Uh, older leaky houses that you're retrofitting, um, you want to do a special, you want to make sure you understand uh, what its heat loads have been. There are way more sophisticated methods than just using a fixed number for every home because every house is a little bit different. Uh, and that would be a manual J calculation. Uh, we can help you with that. Uh, it's the, uh, yeah, we, we can guide you to, to resources. You can find a, a lot of resources on the web too. The heat through the, uh, so the heat goes from the heater through the tank and out to the floor. Questions are, which heater do you need to deliver enough BTUs and how do you get those BTUs out to the floor? Uh, out to the floor, this is each loop, uh, a 300 foot loop, can do plenty of BTUs to achieve it. The more glycol you add, the more antifreeze, the lower the heat transfer will be. If you're using 50% glycol, which is good for really cold stuff, that's like a minus 20 or 30 rating on it, uh, the, you will need to bump the pump speed up to medium in order to be able to um, provide enough BTUs for a typical home. I don't know when that situation would happen, but basically this just says that the, loop, the pumps and the loops that we have will be very adequate for almost every standard situation. The splitters, so each one of these is one of the loops that comes off the back of our, or out of the pump. Uh, this one comes out, this one comes, is the water returning. When you put a splitter on it, the pump feeds two loops, but because of the lower resistance, the water can go through either path and that reduces the resistance. The, each loop gets 90% of the same performance. So it's a, kind of important if you're on a marginal application, you gotta pay attention to that extra 10%, that 10% that uh, uh, downgrade, but almost never is that really an issue. Uh, you can compensate for that by pumping up the, the speed on the pump uh, one step. So 16 loops, um, using uh, 8,100 BTUs per loop, the whole system can do a maximum of about 130,000 BTUs, which for a new house is a lot of capacity. So most people have the, almost in every case, it's going to be either electric or gas, which is either propane or natural gas. So there's two heaters that we have found that work fabulous for this. The on-demand water heaters, they're on-demand water heaters that are space heating rated. We've got a couple sizes in the electric and a couple sizes in the gas. They are inexpensive, really easy to, to work with. Uh, the pros and cons. Uh, the electric's a little more compact and easier to install because you don't have to run the exhaust pipe or the gas line to it. Uh, the gas uh, is high capacity, uh, a lot of BTUs. Uh, with our system, you can't get the rated BTUs out of them, but you can get a lot. So here's an example of the electric one. Uh, to ins this is what an installation actually looks like on the wall. You run the tube that comes out of the pump up to it and clamp that on. Uh, you've run the wires into the side of it. Uh, we've got the 12kW and 18kW sides, which are 40 and 60,000 BTUs. The on gas on-demand water heater, they're 120,000 BTU ratings. Uh, they are pretty effective little units that way. Uh, what else I need to say about those that we won't cover a little bit later. Uh, this one, this table is pretty important. It's for the gas and electric, we get all the BTUs out of it when we're using antifreeze. But as I mentioned earlier, the antifreeze doesn't transfer the heat as well. The gas water heaters uh, have to be derated. Like uh, 
we don't get the 120,000 BTUs out of them. We get about 75,000 BTUs out of them. The larger one, we can get up to 100,000 BTUs on a higher temperature setting, but that one we don't recommend with antifreeze. So going dual fuel is an option. I really expected this option when we came, realized that it would happen, it would work. I really expected it to be a lot more popular than, than the people have actually uh, chosen to install. The good news is if they change their mind, they can come back later and, and uh, add it. Uh, the, oops, wrong button. Hey, come on, there we go. Yeah, so we can do up to three heat sources. This illustrates that. Uh, for other uh, things, we, you can use the uh, other kinds of heat sources. Whatever it is that heat, that's heating water, you want to pull your truck up there and run it through the run water through the radiator. You can do that. I don't know why you would, but you could. So here's an example system. Um, this walks through how we would pick which heater. Uh, would help you best. For 2,100 square foot home, 1,200 square feet on the lower level, in concrete, 900 square feet on the main level. So 1,200 square feet, divide that by 300 foot loops, that gives you four loops there. You can put those four loops with two pumps and, and two splitters. In the, uh, up above the 300 square feet on the main level, that's three more loops. So it's a total of seven loops, uh, two sets of splitters for the ones in the concrete. We can now do the one up above. Um, for a while, we weren't sure you could use splitters up above, but now we, we're confident in that. We've tested it, and it's, we're pretty happy with it. So that can be done with another two pumps. Uh, deter assuming the uh, standard 22 BTUs per square foot, you're going to need 46 thousand BTUs per hour for 2100 square feet and converting that to electric that's 13 and a half kW so we would sell you a 14 kW well 18 is the one we're, we're settled on now we can get the 14 off that because we're not really selling that unit Just, it's interesting the difference between a 12 and an 18 is not a lot of money so the product selector on to, to help you guys walk through that or anyone walk through it, we have a, what we call a product selector on the website. You can enter all the parameters, the square feet, uh, what kind of heat source you want, whether or not you want antifreeze, and it'll recommend the, the configuration complete with an illustration of what you want to do there. I don't think we need the duck on this slide anymore. The duck is our tech support mascot, but this one has a, uh, this one doesn't have the glasses and the laptop like the, the, uh, the new one we hired. Uh, there, on the website there's also the FAQ sheet, uh, the full manual, quick start guides, uh, videos. Uh, we're trying to make it as totally easy to uh, get the help that you need and the understanding ahead of time. If there's any code questions, um, we can work with the code inspector, it, uh, they look a little, or they may question the plumbing connection. In that case, we have a report to offer them in Minnesota and almost every state, there's a, a way of doing an alternative solution where the inspector says, okay, I accept it for, to do this job. And so we have a, a language that, or a, a report that speaks inspector ease. Uh, the silicone hose that we use is rated for 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We only need 170 max on, on our system. Uh, it's rated for 80 PSI. We're only pushing it at 18 PSI max. And usually it's running about 5 PSI or less. So it's way overkill for the job. Uh, the little pump, we often get questions about this. This is the submersible pump. It's a high-tech little unit uh, with uh, fancy polymers, graphite bearings, stainless steel 
uh, shafts and uh, super smart little electronic control package that we talk to for it that protects it from or protects itself from damage uh, and uh, allows variable speed settings so we can it'll run for 30,000 hours which is at least 15 years depending on on how you run your system the uh, it allows us to run its variable speed, so we get four speeds out of it, and the flow. We have the flow ratings uh, for professionals who care. Uh, we have the pump curves. This is how it compares to other pumps in the in the industry. And if you want more details about that, feel free to reach out to me.